Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nick provides Adam with brotherly counsel. At society, Abby and Devon were in a passionate embrace when Tessa entered. Tessa queried whether Abby had arrived early, but she was reassured that she was precisely on schedule. In response to Abby's appreciation for Tessa's time in meeting with her, Devon inquired about Arya. Tessa exclaimed that the hearing aids had completely transformed the child's life. Devon departed, while Tessa expressed her intrigue at Abby's invitation, noting that Abby had requested a meeting with her alone and not Mariah as well. According to Tessa's deduction, the meeting was not wholly social. Abby inquired regarding the status of Tessa's Marchetti modeling engagement. Tessa acknowledged that progress had been somewhat sluggish, given the cyclical nature of fashion marketing, and the spring line had been completed. Abby presumed it wasn't a full-time commitment, and Tessa wondered if that had something to do with why she was there. Abby declared that she intended to propose to Tessa. Abby extolled that if everything went as planned, she'd be joining the board at Chancellor Winters, and she wanted to be as involved there as they'd let her be. Abby continued that she'd need a day manager at Society, and Tessa knew how the restaurant operated because she'd worked there before. Abby asked if Tessa would be interested in the position, but Tessa protested that she hadn't done much managing. Abby called Tessa a problem solver who was excellent with people and knew the regulars, and she thought Tessa would be a perfect fit. Tessa promised to speak to Mariah and think it over, but she questioned why a successful entrepreneur like Abby wanted to go back to an office. Abby explained that she'd been feeling restless because society was a well-oiled mechanism, but talking about joining the board had excited her. Tessa offered to give Abby an answer by the next day, remarking that she was excited about the idea, too. Abby and Tessa hugged farewell as Devon returned to the restaurant. After Tessa left, Abby reported to Devon that she believed Tessa was interested, and if Tessa accepted, Abby would be one step closer to joining Devon at Chancellor Winters. Devon said he was glad to have her join the team even though Nate believed Tucker had lost interest. Abby contended that Tucker wasn't the only reason she wanted to join the board, and she looked forward to demonstrating Devon what she was capable of in a corporate setting and having a say in Dominic's legacy. She added that she also wished to be more connected to Devon and his world. He adored the sound of it, and they kissed. At Newman Enterprises, Victor updated Victoria and Nick about the incident at the Oregon prison. Victor indicated that it would take weeks before the authorities could identify the corpses, but there were six inmates who were unaccounted for. Nick realized that Jordan could have run off in the pandemonium. Victoria pondered if her mom knew, and Victor shared that Nikki had freaked out when she'd seen the news report. Victoria wagered Victor wished he had told Nikki himself, but Victor imagined it would have upset Nikki even more. Nick worried that with no evidence that Jordan was deceased, she could be hitchhiking her way back to Genoa City. Victoria insisted that they be on high alert until they knew. Victor pledged to do everything in his power to protect Nikki, and he mentioned that he'd know where she was every minute of the day. At Newman Media, Nikki answered her landline phone, but no one was on the line. She hung up and nervously grabbed her mobile phone, and she was relieved that she hadn't received any calls there. She attempted to resume working, but her landline rang again. Leave me alone, she bellowed into the phone before hanging up and weeping. Nikki grabbed her outerwear and purse and headed for the door. Moments later, Victor answered a call, and he was startled to hear Nikki had taken a rideshare. He ordered his investigator to covertly follow her and let him know where she ended up. Nikki crept into the empty glass lounge, wearing sunglasses to conceal her face. She sat at a table near the rear and gestured for service. Meanwhile, Victor learned of Nikki's whereabouts from his investigator and declared that he was on his way. A brief time later, Victor entered the empty glass and approached a server. Victor asked if the man had seen a woman matching Nikki's description and if she'd been imbibing. The server snapped that the residents there valued their privacy, and Victor pulled out some bills and asked if that helped. Nikki spotted Victor and stayed out of sight in the back of the bar. She drunkenly sent a text message to Jack, call Vitor.loot him some paste to met. ASSP. Plus. 
At Jabot, Lauren entered Jack's office and recognized that Jack had wanted to discuss something with her in person for a while. He asked how things were at Fenmore's, and she boasted that everything was going like clockwork. He was pleased to hear it, and he requested a favor. Jack informed Lauren that things were improving with Nikki, since she'd been reaching out to him after her first drink and sometimes before she succumbed to the impulse. Lauren considered it development. Jack mentioned a predicament at work that could lead to everything going awry. He explained that Nikki hadn't yet replaced Claire as her assistant, and Audra had just left Newman Media. Jack lamented that Nikki was in a tailspin without support, and she was taking on too much at the wrong moment. He worried that the stress of attempting to run a division on her own while fighting her addiction was a recipe for disaster. Lauren figured that Newman would hire the best in the industry, but Jack pointed out that trust was paramount with Nikki. Jack believed Nikki needed someone who knew the cast of characters and could demonstrate kindness and discretion without being a pushover. He added that the person had to realize the position was temporary until Nikki got control of her life again. Jack asked if Lauren could let her staff run Fenmore's while she stepped in to assist Nikki. Lauren appreciated Jack's faith in her, but she balked because she wasn't in the media realm. Jack countered that she wouldn't be producing or editing, but only serving as backup on internal matters that she'd dealt with before, like negotiations and contracts. Lauren doubted she was the appropriate person, but Jack pleaded that Nikki needed someone she could count on. He asserted that he'd do it himself if Nikki hadn't been adamant that Victor remain unaware that Jack was involved. Jack pointed out that Victor was enamored of Lauren and she'd never been married to Nikki or been Victor's sworn enemy. Lauren felt blessed with an incredible management team who was excellent at managing things day to day, and she figured she could step in to assist Nikki for a bit while still being available for the big things at Fenmore's. Lauren insisted on knowing whether Nikki was receptive to the arrangement or if she would see it for what it really was watching to make sure Nikki didn't take that first drink. Jack shared that Nikki knew he'd been contemplating someone to recommend as her COO, but she didn't know it was Lauren. Jack reiterated that Nikki needed a right hand to depend on, and he anticipated that she'd be delighted if she had a friend she could truly trust. Lauren imagined it would be a fresh challenge, and she hoped Finn wouldn't be turned down if he ever needed assistance. Lauren reiterated that it would be temporary, and she wouldn't walk away from Fenmore's. Jack offered to accommodate any schedule she wished, and Lauren agreed to assist. Lauren recalled when she'd told Jack she was in over her head and needed assistance, and he'd stepped in without hesitation to become Nikki's sponsor. Jack reasoned that it was what they did for the people they loved. He received Nikki's text message and showed it to Lauren. Jack noted that Nikki's messages were routinely letter perfect, and he concluded that she was drunk and asking him to rescue her. Enable her is more like it, Lauren murmured. Lauren asked what Jack intended to do, and he replied that Nikki had left him little choice. At the empty glass, the server confirmed the woman Victor was searching for had been there, but he couldn't say for sure what she'd been drinking. Victor answered a call from Jack, who urgently requested to meet to speak about Nikki. Victor replied that he'd be in his office in 15 minutes, and he headed out. Nikki exhaled a sigh of relief. Meanwhile, at Newman, Nick hoped to complete an acquisition deal in record time to please Victor. Adam silently sipped a glass of water, and Nick observed that his sibling had been distracted all day. Adam referred to personal matters, and he recalled that Nick had made it clear he wanted to keep things between them strictly business. Nick reasoned that it had been to prevent them from falling back into old patterns, but he preferred to talk about Adam's personal problems because they were guaranteed to affect his work performance. Nick added that things had been going great between them, and he wanted to keep Adam in a good position. Nick promised that Adam would get no judgment from him.